Does the Epstein-Barr virus cause or trigger multiple sclerosis? A recent study in the scientific journal Science titled Longitudinal Analysis Reveals High Prevalence of Epstein-Barr Virus Associated with Multiple Sclerosis. It's getting a lot of attention in the MS community. Let's review what they discovered. Hi, I'm Pam Bartha, and if you enjoy videos like these, please like and share this video to help us get the word out. First, what is the Epstein-Barr virus or EBV? The Epstein-Barr virus is a type of herpes virus. It is one of the most common human viruses and it's found all over the world. Most people get infected with EBV at some point in their life. It can cause mononucleosis, also known as mono, but other illnesses also. The journal Science reported that about 94% of the general population has antibodies for the Epstein-Barr virus. So virtually everyone gets Epstein-Barr in their lifetime. Now let's review the findings and conclusions of this study. What's all the buzz about? First, they found that MS patients most often had the Epstein-Barr virus before they got MS. But isn't this true for most of the general population, where about 94% of all people have also had Epstein-Barr virus? Second, the researchers believe that getting MS first and then EBV after the start of MS is not likely. Because they don't know what causes MS, this conclusion is speculation. Third, they looked at a specific group of over 10 million active members of the military. And this is over a 20 year period from 1993 to 2013. They analyzed EBV antibodies in the blood of 801 people from this large group who developed MS during the 20 year period. The scientists reported that 800 of the 801 MS cases had antibodies to EBV at the time of MS onset. So only one MS case didn't have antibodies of EBV before the start of MS symptoms. The study didn't provide any additional information about the veterans that got MS, like what type of MS they had or the progression of the disease. In this study, they also discussed how the EBV virus can infect B cells and how this virus is also strongly associated with other autoimmune diseases besides MS. They state that they don't know how EBV could cause MS to develop, but they speculate that molecular mimicry could potentially cause immune cells to attack nerve cells by mistake. It's important to remember that this is a theory and it's speculation, it's not fact. It has not been proven in any studies. Using their data, if there are 10 million veterans in this group and about 94% have had EBV in the past, then 9.4 million veterans in this group have probably already had EBV. They have antibodies to EBV. Now, if 801 veterans in this group develop MS over the 20 year period and 800 of this group have antibodies to EBV, simple math shows that 99.99% of those who are infected with EBV or were infected with EBV do not develop multiple sclerosis and only 0.009% of the veterans in this group who had antibodies to EBV got MS. If EBV is a trigger for MS, wouldn't we see more cases of multiple sclerosis if 94% of the general population had EBV? I don't see how this data shows that EBV is a strong trigger for multiple sclerosis. Based on their data, I believe their conclusion is very weak. And if the evidence is so weak, why is this study being promoted so much and why is it published in such an important journal? From the MS Society website, the Executive Vice President of Research for the National MS Society stated, this is an impressive study from a highly regarded research group that strengthens the scientific consensus. 
that infection with Epstein-Barr virus is a trigger for MS. Development of Epstein-Barr virus vaccines is underway, and once one is proven safe and effective, it should be tested with haste in people at high risk for, for MS. The MS Society also stated on their website, the National MS Society invested in this study as part of its ongoing research commitment to ending MS. The following is from the science website. There may be new opportunities for therapy. Would a vaccine for Epstein-Barr protect against MS? Can the B cells that dwell in the central nervous system be killed or inactivated with therapeutics? Would antivirals that target EBV provide effective therapy, especially when given early in the course of disease? Now that the initial trigger of MS has been identified, perhaps MS could be eradicated. What? <laughs> They've just assumed that they have identified the initial trigger for MS without any scientific consensus. In conclusion, it's going to take years of research and hopefully there will be a vaccine, more immune, immunosuppressive drug treatments or antivirals. Is this the answer? Please share your comments. I want to know what you think. Do you feel this is promising research or do you feel that this is more of the same? How MS has been treated for many, many years. Please don't forget to like and share and subscribe to get more videos like this. If you're frustrated with the fact that our standard of care still doesn't have a great solution for treating multiple sclerosis, then click on the link in the description of this video to watch my honest and in-depth conclusion of this study that I can't share here and discover real solutions that have allowed myself and many others to live free of MS symptoms. You'll find the link below.